Hello everyone and welcome to the last exhibition match cast before the Steam release. That's right! Zero K is getting released on Steam! Pretty soon. Like next week. Next next Friday. There is a Steam release. And hopefully we'll get people playing, because I wanna do a bunch of stuff of me actually playing for next week's stream. I I mean replays are always well and good, but the thing is that it's hopefully a bunch of people in, and it'd be cool to have a stream of me playing. But that's next week. Unless I can get some games this week. That'd be kind of cool, too. For now, though, let's just start with some casts. So we have first match being Orphelius versus Sabbath on Fairyland. Sabbath going for a Cloakybot Factory, and Orphelius going for the Shieldbot Factory. Relatively classic matchup right there, because that is how things often go. Cloakybot and Shieldbot Factory are both very strong, very reliable, very easy-to-use factories. And that's how the people are playing. Looks like Sabbath going for a bit more of an aggressive opening. Setting up several glaives right at the beginning of the match. Not really going for a whole lot of anything else. See the glaives. And at the same time, you have Orphelius going for a very economic strategy. Building a very early bandit. Getting a couple... Oh, sorry. Very, very early convicts. Getting the one bandit for scouting. But that's about it. On the other hand, Sabbath, they are clearly gearing up for some kind of fight. Or at least very trying to go for some serious harassment right at the beginning, and that's that is going to be reasonably effective actually. There are a couple defender or a couple pickets that have been set up. Those will be able to take care of one of the glaives no problem. But if the glaives time it right, they should be able to actually get through this convict. And it looks like Orphelius is well aware of oops, Orphelius is well aware of this, or well enough aware of this, so they will not have any problems. Still though that. That glaive, it gets the spot stuff, gets to know, oh, hey, there's a convict, there's very little else. I mean, it might realize there's a bandit probably somewhere on the map, but there's nothing else to really show for this. At this point, Sabbath is probably going to be fairly confident they can expand reasonably well, since they don't see much, much military. And they also see that Orphelius is being a little bit timid when it comes to actually how they attack. That being said, the Sabbath is not really expanding very much. Sabbath playing it very close to the chest. Mostly going in the backyard expansion, not really focusing too much on setting up over here in the natural or setting up... Actually, they are setting up further up in the middle of the map. Which looks like Orphelia is, is kind of calling as well. Setting up a few bandits there just to prevent any expansion from coming in, which won't be actually successful. It'll scout the expansion for sure. Oh, it would have scouted the expansion. Never mind, Orphelia is actually pulling away from that, trying to just do a little patrol over the south side of the map. Not actually checking this particular expansion long enough. But, as it stands, Orphelius is more just scouting around trying to figure out what the heck's going on. At the same time, Sabbath's not actually really building much of anything militarily. Mo almost all their focus is on setting up their economy from the looks of it, but I don't see... Ah, oh, never mind. More glaives. All the more glaives. Actually, that is a more important thing. Sabbath's entire match has been getting a lot in the way of military. They haven't been building much economy. They've been building a lot of units. Building a lot of glaives. I mean, I might have been seeking to see when I said there was an early raid with two glaives, but five glaives coming in here, this looks like it is trying to pick out something. Either get to these bandits and kill them, although clearly that's not the option to be gone for, since, as you can see right here, Sabbath's a little bit timid about how exactly to approach that. Or to find some weak spots, weak undefended metal extractors, of which Orphelius has one? This one right here, that's the only one that's undefended. Everything else, they've got defense turrets. Granted, not enough to necessarily survive five glaives, but enough to at least be able to manage that when the bandits come along and then add to that defense. So overall, it should be fine. Anyway, Sabbath continuing to move forward and can you do... Are they... No, they're trying to get this ridge in the center. That's usually how it's played. You set up at this ridge and then work from there. But it's kind of hard to tell exactly how much Sabbath is planning on moving forward, because ultimately they could actually take the Eastern Expansions here. But if that's assuming their commander survives, the band's coming in here getting torn to pieces. Nothing left of them except for the fact that they're now reclaim fodder. So at this point, Sabbath, they are doing quite well for themselves, at least in terms of map position. They could easily expand over to this, like I said, the Southeast Expansion to an extent, the Eastern Center Expansion... And at the same time, Orphelius' as commander, they've just got to build Stardust everywhere to make sure these glaives don't get in. And of course, that only lasts as long as Ronin don't come in, though, to be fair, again, both players 
being much more focused on something not to do with their military. I really find it curious that people don't tend to repeat build. It's just one of those things that it's a super convenient feature that I don't see people use a lot. And I can kind of see it if you're trying to focus on your economy, but that's not really a thing there. It, like, seriously, th there's not much else being focused on, so... At any rate, Ophelia's now getting the back set up. And still no... Okay, I, I don't know. I'd really like to know why Ophelia isn't using repeat queue, because it's not like... I mean, that might be a thing that higher level players don't do that I haven't really noticed much, is use repeat queue. I mean, I can kind of see the logic if you want to have full control of your construction, then you would avoid repeat queue. It's just, I also kind of don't get it. Oh well. Anyway. That being said, we do have rogues coming in here. Rogue outlaw coming in from Orphelius, which should be able to deal with the defenses no problem. However, the glaives... If, the problem is the outlaws. If the glaives could get through the outlaws, or something got through the outlaws, and stopped the outlaws from being, then there'd be some solution. But the problem is that they can't. Because outlaws... Outlaws do not really work well against like sorry, outlaws work really well against glaives. Glaives don't work against outlaws the same way they say work against warriors, where enough of them will overwhelm. Like enough of them will overwhelm, but the slow effect is such a powerful effect that even when they do, the glaives are essentially crippled for about 30 seconds as they're waiting for the slow to wear off. In that time, other units can come in and start tearing pieces. I mean the rogues alongside the outlaws are gonna have something of an easy time getting rid of the glaives with the glaives approach. Oh, okay. So Philly is saying you don't want to have repeat queue in order to avoid predictable units. That makes a lot of sense. That makes an, an incredible amount of sense, actually. I will keep that in mind. Because that's actually a thing that I... Yeah, I can see that. You can get kind of lazy with, with your unit construction if you're just building on repeat queue. You're not thinking about anything else. So, fair point. At this point, we aren't actually seeing... We are, however, seeing excess from both players. That is the one thing. Like, I get that argument. But if you're going to do that, then you're going to need StarCraft Micro. Or, or Macro, rather. You're going to need You're gonna need to remember to go back to that factory, hit Control-Q, or sorry, Alt-Q or Alt-W. No, Alt-Q. Hit Alt-Q and actually start tapping those unit hockeys so you can continue building units. I'm assuming you're using the default hockeys. Alt-Q is the default. It's a new thing. I don't know how well known it is. But Alt-Q, Alt-Q through Alt-T, or Q-W-R-T on a QWERTY keyboard, those are default factory selection hockeys. So if you have a factory, I, I can't do it because I'm a spectator. Oh, I can't do it. Never mind. So yeah, if you have a factory, you can actually use Alt-Q... Oops. Geez. You can use Alt-Q to get, to get that factory and select it and then build with it. And I think it actually depends on who I'm selecting. Okay, that's if I select Orpheus that... Nope, I can only get Orpheus' factory. That is bizarre. Okay. Bit of a weirdness when it comes to spectators, but the point is... Or if I do that... Nope. Nope, Alt, alt Q is, is Orpheus. Okay, cool. Yeah, Google Frog just added them about two weeks ago. As hockey settings. So yeah, you can actually use... You can have your factories essentially selected... It's in the core selector. Again, I can't really show a spectator, but there's the core selector here that's normally here when you're a player. That will show all the hotkeys for every factory that you have built up. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually make a hotkey video probably Monday. I'm probably gonna make well, I don't know exactly when, but I plan before the Steam release, I'm gonna make a video going over at least some basics regarding hotkeys. Just to help people out or just point out like, hey, these are cool hotkeys. All of them are configurable now, or almost all of them are configurable. Ooh, nice snitch, by the way. Sabbath getting completely torn to pieces. Their glaives pushed back thanks to the snitch that Orphelius had set up, and really at this point, Orphelius getting great map control. And with a 7 metal per second advantage. And the Amphib Factory? I guess they're going for an early grizzly, trying to go for that Demi Strider. But anyway, yeah, I'm probably doing a hockey video pretty soon. Just to, just to point out, like, hey, these are things you can do, these are things you can configure, and these are some cool defaults. But at this point, Orphelia is no going for ducks. Okay, duck and bandit. So I guess the duck is supposed to be their riot unit right now. Interesting choice. Man, Orphelia's, I'm. These are curious unit choices. I've never seen someone use Amph Second Factory. I remember people, like, 
I was chatting with somebody on my previous casts, actually. The idea of using Amphib, especially for archers, on a map like this. Like a map where you have pits you can push units into. And I was thinking, oh, no, that's like Amphib Factory, Second Factory. That's not really a thing you do. But you just did it, Orphelius. So, yeah. That's an interesting call. I don't know if I agree, but it'll be cute to see how it works. Oh, why the heck are there no... Ah, there we go. It'll be interesting to see how it works, because I'm actually genuinely curious. But that's not the case. The current Shieldbot Factory is clearly having a bit of a limitation, which I guess is why we see the Amphib setup. And there's the Grizzly. Okay, that makes more sense. Amphib for Archer does not make as much sense to me. Amphib for Grizzly does. Like I said, they're kind of like Striders, but cheaper. So you build a cheaper Strider hub with the Amphib Factory, and then you build a cheaper Strider with the Grizzly. And there you go. But at this point, Sabbath does have the spec or the Phantoms built up. They are set up to help deal with these Grizzlies. Actually, more so set up to help deal with things like Felons, so that's probably a big reason for the Amphib switch. And on top of that, they're just going to be able to go around here and start tearing apart all of this economy. They're going to start getting rid of these Metal Extractors. They're going to start getting rid of possibly the Razor if it opens up. Because there are Thunderbirds flying around. Sabbath has set up that whole lightning strategy. We saw that earlier. I didn't really point it out. But yeah, that... That giant lightning strike, that meant the entire shield ball of Orphelius died. That being said, though, Orphelius is still doing okay. I mean, if you look at their actual stats here, they are... they're fine. Like, they're ahead in metal produced, they're still ahead in metal used, and their army value... Their army value is behind, mind you. This grizzly is the only thing that's meant to be the army value, and even, they're, even then, they're still 1,500 metal behind. And it's mainly mass glaives with the Thunderbird support! And Thunderbird coming in here, managing to disarm the Grizzly. 15 seconds of disarm. That is more than enough time. If it weren't for the Stardust, and the Stardust had gotten hit, it would be over. But that Stardust is the one thing keeping this game going for Ophelius right now. They'd be losing their command on the Grizzly. And even now, there's, it's still an awkward position. But it's enough. Now the Stardust is finally being torn apart. Or, sorry, finally being disarmed. But it's too late. The Glaives have already been destroyed. There is no force here for Sabbath. That's going to be back in time to take advantage of all this stuff. And with that, Sabbath throws in the towel. Interesting. They, I guess they figured that was their one shot, and I... Hmm. I don't know if I totally agree. I mean, they were behind economically, so I can see why they were thinking, hey, this is my one shot. And I think that if they had managed to destroy Orphilus' commander and Grizzly, they've got that Stardust. The rest of this would have likely died. Or... Likely. Still a lot of HP. I'm actually not sure. I mean, Glaives do deal a lot of damage per second. It's just... It's not the most... I don't think it's enough. 120 damage per second. No, it would have been enough. Yeah. There was enough of them. Because that was 2400 damage per second for the whole group of glaives. If that Stardust wasn't there, then it would have been 2400 damage per second for 15 seconds. That would have been more than enough time to wipe out the entire base. Or the entire fire base. So that would have been a win. That was very much a knife edge thing. I think Orphelius would have been able to recover, but had Sabbath gotten that, they would have at the very least evened things out really well. At any rate, that was that. Rather interesting game at that. And yeah, before I go, I don't... Just, yeah, so the hockey panel is a thing. And also, under selection... Go down to... Or, wait, no. Oh, right, sorry, it's not in there. That's the reason I'm going to mention the tutorials, because there's actually a few hockeys that are not quite in there, which honestly is more of a bug than really anything else. But it's... What the heck is it? Shoot. Quick selection bar. There it is. So the quick selection bar hotkeys, you have select factory up to 16. You can set them to whatever you want. I've got them customized myself, but yeah, you can just do whatever the heck you want. And it'll just go. So yeah, the next match today, and no, this is not the only match. I started late, but I'm going to have three replays. So don't worry about it. I just started late. Next match is going to be FFC versus Exploit. That'll be on Gecko Isle. And that'll be interesting, because I haven't seen Exploit in a while. Apparently they've been playing quite well. I think I saw them more recently than I remember, but yeah, they've been doing a pretty good job recently. So anyway, get to that in a couple seconds. Stay tuned, because that will be up in a couple seconds.